Getting a hang of the Swift UI layout system can be a little bit of a challenge, especially if you have a lot of knowledge of UI kit and auto layout and you come in with these expectations. With this video, I want to give a direct comparison of the auto layout in UI kit and the Swift UI layout system. I'm going to give you a couple of different examples. You can also have a look at the description of the timestamps. If you have a certain question and you want to just jump ahead, I'm probably not going to cover everything because there's just so many possibilities. So if you have another question, you can also leave a comment. I'm not going to go into very much detail about auto layout. I'm just going to implement a short example in UIKit and then we translate it to SwiftUI. That's why I'm going to use mostly zip files because it's a little bit faster. Obviously, you could do the same with programmatic layout guides. Like this, we can spend more time on the SwiftUI stuff, which is probably what you're here for. When I prepared for this comparison, I found it quite interesting because it made me think differently and see some of the advantages and disadvantages of SwiftUI. Okay, let's jump into code. I'm going to create a new project. This is a little bit more easy for the Swift UI side of things because we see it directly working. Not like if I would do it in the playground. Unfortunately, uh, the playground is not, um, not the same. I'm going to create a new project with, for iOS, a single view application, and I'm naming this UI kit Swift UI comparison project. I'm using as the interface Swift UI. This is actually not so important because I'm going to create single views for Swift UI and single zip files for UI kit. So we have a little bit better organization of our project and can really focus on each of these topics. I'm going to create a group for each example with two different files of Swift UI and UI kit. So you can also find the final project in the description box. So this is simple alignment guides. I'm going to first create a UI kit one. So this is a Cuckoo Touch class, a UI view controller, and this is, I guess, just naming the simple view controller with the zip file. Actually, I only need the zip file. I'm going for the zip file and now I need to find my view controller. So this has nothing. I'm opening the Xcode library and we're adding here label as the most basic element to add. So I can drag this on the, the view controller and then wait until I'm getting the alignment guides for a center. And I'm just going to renaming this to center aligned. And then I have to drag it back to the center. And I want to add the most common alignment guides, which is horizontal in container and vertical in container. If I add this to constraints, it stays in the center no matter which screen size I use. If you do the same thing in Swift UI, I'm just going to create here a new file. This is now a Swift UI view. And I guess I just named this simple Swift UI view. When this is created, it is adding here text. So this is similar to, this is equivalent to our label, to our UI label. And I can also change the text here to center aligned. As you see, per default, the default is always that the child is aligned in the center of its container. You basically get automatically the center aligned layout guides. If you now want to adjust it a little bit more and let's say instead of having the center aligned, I want to still have it centrally aligned horizontally, but vertically on the top. So I could basically find the alignment guide. So this is the center Y. Here I just open the side. So I'm center aligned in my super view and I'm probably should just delete this. It's usually easier to delete alignment guides. Don't have so much space. Then I open, I need to select my view. It's now complaining that it's missing one constraint. And I'm going to move this up until I hit the safe area. And then I tap to add one constraint. So now the top of my text is aligned to the top of the safe area. So how do I do this pinning it to the top in Swift UI? Because it's automatically, this is a little bit more contour intuitive because basically don't use an alignment guide because I said it's, sent, it's aligning the child in the center of the available space, the container or this view. 
in order to take advantage to do this myself, because I cannot tell it to align it differently, I need to take up more space so I can control how to align things. One thing to do is add a V-stack. So we have stacks in UI here too, but in Swift UI they're much more important. And I can say I add here a spacer. So now actually I need to go in the um, selectable preview so we see where things are. So if I now are tap somewhere in the line of the V-stack or the end of the V-stack, you see this blue border showing how much my V-stack is. This is now much larger because I added a spacer that pushes everything up. If I would want to change this to put it on the button, I would simply change the order here to have it on the bottom. So this is equivalent to UI kit alignment guides to the bottom, bottom edge. Another alternative to this kind of spacers or the V-stack with a spacer that might make more sense in terms of alignment is to use frames. And in particular, flexible frames, because you don't use absolute values. You use minimum ideal with and maximum values. So I can use a frame with a, because I want to make it now very high. I want to increase the maximum height. So this is maximum height. And I say I'm making this infinite, which basically says, tells the system to make it as big as there is space. Take up the whole space. And it becomes a greedy view, a view that expands. Now I still, I mean, you can see from the blue borders, it's bigger, but I'm still center aligned. And the main reason why I actually needed these frames is to use the extra argument of alignment. And now you can say top, bottom or center. So we want to have the top. I find using frames easier simply because it's easier to read um, with spacers or space holders, space holders, placeholders. You usually need to change the order and then it's like, oh, it's there. So it's this edge. So frames are a little bit easier to read. Okay. This was the example of moving our views or aligning it in the container. Okay. Next, I want to talk more about views that are expanding that you want to constrain in how large they are. So I'm going to just make a new group for organization purposes. So size alignment okay i'm just doing the same one view controller um because this is the, we could also do the same in one view controller which is size view controller with the zip file because the zip file is the one i'm actually using and one size swift ui view swift ui view which is then just this a size swift ui view for example in ui kit you won't want to add a background color so we would do this with a UI view, open the inspector. So the main purpose was just to set a color. I'm dragging it to the safe area, alignment guides. And let's make this like so. So I wanted to use the whole space and I want to pin it. So I pin it to the top, left, right. And I need one more for the height. For now, I'm just going to use a fixed height. Let's put 250. Let's do the same for Swift UI. So instead of a view in Swift UI, we use color is itself a view. So we don't need to use a UI with view. So you can just use color directly with teal. Did I use teal? Colors are one of these greedy views. So they try to ask for more space. They will just take up basically the rest of the space. So in this case, it uses the whole area without the safe area. So on the top, this is fine. On the left and right, I want to have some space. So what I need to do is I need to have left and right some insets or padding. So you can basically, instead of saying there's an alignment guide, you say, I need to basically add something else that takes up space like padding. And this was 16 in the horizontal direction. So now we have it in this. And I want to have the, the last constraint in this was the height of 250. And for this, the easiest is for this, we can again use the frame, but in this case, it's fixed frames. We have a frame height 
of 250, which means that this view is again, as I said, central aligned. If you want to move it upwards, you can add basically another frame. You can add as many as you want to. Maximum height of infinity alignment top. So now it's on the top and we have the same results for UI kit and Swift UI. Now I use this kind of padding to say how much I want to have a distance to its super view. What happens if I have a second view? For example, if I have here two colors, I'm going to delete all constraints because I'm usually not very good at adding them afterwards. So I'm making this half its size and I can add another color next to it. If you want, you can also change this. Okay, and then I want to add the height constraint of 250 again for both. They are still both on top. So I can add this ones for the first one. I want to have again the 16 and for the second one two. So you can add here trailing edges. Okay, I need to change this because I want to add the first item's trailing edge to the second item's leading edge with a constant of 20. And then, okay, and then I select both and I use, I select both and I use equal width. Okay, after fixing everything, I basically have them now directly touching each other. We can also add a spacing of 10 or at least in this case I need to put a for the which I need to put in minus 10. So now I have two colors that have the equal space and they have a distance of 10. This is now much more easy in Swift UI. So again if you want to have something again we need to work with stacks if I have more than one view. So I was using I think pink which is now taking up more space so I also have to add here this constraints. So I'm going to move the height constraints and pushing it up outside and the, to the edge stack. And then here this padding has to also go outside to the edge stack. And now the last thing I actually need to do in order to fix the spacing between these two colors is adjust the spacing in the stack, which is then zero or 10, depending on what you want. So zero or 10. As you see, it's a lot easier. This is pretty much the default. I guess the height adjustments and the spacing is more obvious, but per default, you always get equal widths for these two colors. That is because the SwiftUI layout system, when it tries to figure out how to distribute the space, because I have two colors, they're both greedy. They want as much as they have, as, as they can get. So the layout system offers both views the same amount of space, which means that they get the same amount of width half of what's available minus the paddings and spacing. So we always get equal width. Because it's the default value, it's very easy to get. But if we want to have a different ratio of this width, it's getting harder. Mm -hmm. This is, for example, when you... I had here this equal width. You could also add here a multiplier of 0 0.7. So now one of them would be much smaller than the other one. You can adjust it as much as you want. We can also do the height adjustment. You can also do stuff like aspect ratio very easily. All of which means that I could also get rid of my height constraints because these are fixed with 250. Maybe you want to have something more flexible and instead use an aspect ratio. I can do everything very easily in UI kit once I set it up correctly. <laughs> in Swift UI, how the hell do you change the aspect ratio? Okay. So I'm going to leave this and just copy it and we add here another one. So this is Swift UI aspect ratio. And I add this as another preview preview. You can also add and create a new file if you want to. So now I go in this one, just going to change the preview display name to aspect ratio. Oh, actually, it's not the ratio. It's not the ratio. It's a multiply. As you see here, because I said it's automatically distributing the space in a way that I don't directly have access to with this H stack, because the H stack is doing this. One possibility is to use the geometry reader because 
this gives you the geometry, the proxy. So I need to move my edge stack inside and pray that everything stays the same. Okay, now this proxy has the width and I can add more frames for each of these colors. So this is a width of proxy size width times, okay, maybe I should use a constant here. Let ratio is a CG float of 0 0.7. So the first one should be 0 0.7. So this is this ratio. And then the second, the pink one, gets the rest. So this would be then 1 minus the ratio. Ah, and actually <laughs> one other problem is, um, you see here it's overflowing. This is because here my 10, I didn't consider my 10, so I need to actually adjust this and say the width that I'm here distributing is the proxy size width minus 10. And the second one too. So now you have to write ratio. You can also trust this with 50% or 20%. Okay, I guess I go back to the example, so they are both the same. So this is um, one way of doing it. Geometry Reader has a lot of problems <laughs> and sometimes um, crashes. And it's actually not so good to use it too much. The reason why this is it's because it's actually changing your layout <laughs> because basically I said the colors are a greedy view. Geometry is also a greedy view. The reason why it's not doing it in this case is because I have here this constraint for the height. So the geometry reader itself will only take up to this 250 height. A new way of doing this kind of aspect ratio here, um, because I said it's actually the H stack that does it, is to write your own stack, your own layout container. And for this, we have now with iOS 16, the layout protocol. This writing your own layout containers is a little bit more cumbersome. You need to really think of what you're doing. But you basically have access to the, um, when I said the child asks for space, and then your it says, in this case, I want all of the space. And then the container says, no, this is, not in, this is too much, and I give you this and this. You have to write a little bit of math to do this, but it is possible. The same for certain, actually, this is just the ratio between this, not the aspect ratio. For example, if I have here this image that comes with a certain aspect ratio and a resolution, and I just want to put it on screen so it fills the whole width, but with a certain aspect ratio, just because then on different screens, it looks much better. <clears throat> so here I have this candies image and made it resizable. Images on SwiftUI are not per default greedy. This resizable makes it greedy and then the other one is scale to fit. So how much do you want to scale it up until it fits into the space that is offered? You see here one more simple <laughs> implementation of a layout. So this I just called fixed explain ratio stack. Has This is the new layout which is available for the newer versions. The parameter I want to vary is the aspect ratio. When you do this, you need to fulfill, you need to give two functions, the size that fits. What you get here is the available space. So in this case, it's the container space. And you get also all the sub views and their size, for example. In this case, I actually cheat a little bit. I only want to place one and I don't really care about the other ones. So I say, okay, I want to just the space that I'm saying I'm fitting here is the whole width that I'm proposed. And the height is the width divided by the aspect ratio that we want to say. Then when I, the second function is place subviews. So I again have to check what the size is that I want to make myself. So it's the bounds width and the aspect ratio for the height and width. And then in order to actually place this, you need to loop through all the subviews and tell them how, to, how they are placed. So this is this place function add this function with this proposed size. And because I only want to place one view, I only care about one view. So this is going to not work if you have multiple views. Okay, let's try this. This is my fixed aspect ratio stack with 0 0.7. And I'm placing here my stack inside. Nothing happens first. Need to go in the selectable preview. And then when you tap on fixed aspect ratio, you see this blue border. So it's actually that big. And this is because I used to use scale to fit 
Um, so it just fits into this aspect ratio stack now. If I change to fill, it fills now the stack. You can also see this with a padding that is actually overflowing. This is because of the stack. And if you, because now the view is basically bigger than the available space, but you can cut this to the available space by saying clipped. So now we are clipping it to this area with this default padding. Okay, I probably, maybe you don't want to have an aspect ratio of 0 0.7, but more like 1.5. And then maybe I take out the padding. This was just more for demonstration that I actually have to cut this. And you see, I get a certain aspect ratio that I want to. I can also try this by adding here multiple of them. So I can embed this in another stack. I'm using, making, adding one with a different image maybe and the spacing of zero. Okay, maybe we go back to this 0 0.7 that I had before. So what happens is each of these views gets the same, or each of these stacks gets the same space. But inside they, they scale their height depending on the width. As you see, this layout has a lot of potential to help you with your specific layout things. With the, um, if you have an aspect ratio, for example, that you want to use, you couldn't do the same with geometry reader if you want to do this, because it's not so easy to measure the size in Swift UI, because in UI kit you can always say what's the size of the view and then adjust it programmatically, or you can also change it during runtime <laughs> with Swift UI because you're kind of fixed here, and you don't really know the size, and you might want to do this again and. You might want to do this for earlier versions, not just for the layout availability. One thing is you can actually measure the size of views. This is a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to give you the final code. What I have to use is the geometry reader to get the size. But as I said, the geometry reader does influence the layout because it's a greedy view, it takes up more space. And because of this, I'm adding it to the background, which is not part of the how much space views take up. And because in the background, I need to somehow propagate it outside to a higher level in the view tree. And for this, we're using here preference keys. So this is this preference key. And then the last part is because I wanted to make this as convenient as possible. So you don't need to write this all the time. I added here a custom view modifier that measures this and creates a binding. So for example, in this view, you can create a state property size cg rect actually measure the whole thing and then to this hello world you can add the measure bounds with this binding and here is the namespace so then you can you can see in a minute why this is interesting and i'm going to just add here a text where you can see where i display the size so this is the size dot width and the size dot height. So you see it's it's 97 wide and 20 high. Um, we can also test this by changing the font to headline. And then the width gets higher. Okay, maybe I should have used something more dramatic like title. So this is working, you see the values. And for example, now you could add here with a little bit of a, let's say I want to add, make this in a C stack, like a card, adding a color. So this is color dot teal. And I want to have this equal height. Okay, maybe I should have added the measure to the Z stack. And then we add here the frame of height. And I want to use the size dot width. So now I'm using the height, uh, the width for the height. I need to be a little bit careful because just imagine you're measuring something because I'm here measuring this and then I change it, which means that this is now changing it, which is then measuring it again, which is then triggering this to change it again. So you might create loops with the layout. In this case, I'm only changing this once because I'm only the width is fixed. I use the width for the height. Even if I change it again, it's not changing it anymore. It's a little bit tricky, but 
you need to be careful, but it can work. And you see, this is probably um, maybe the easiest way of doing this. Now about this namespace, this is because um, the property that I actually didn't use, it's basically a coordinate system. So this is origin, this is the size. Um, okay, maybe I should not have made it size, but frame. And the size dot min y. So in x it's zero. This is because it's hitting the edge. And in y direction is 200. This is because it's measuring the coordinate system is basically, the origin is basically here. So it, in y direction it has to go 217 down, but not in x direction it doesn't need to go anywhere. You can also test this by adding here a spacer because then I move it in the y direction. So now the 200 becomes 59. Now you might say, maybe I want to know the hello world text it, its origin in the coordinate system of this teal color. So I'm just going to add another one here. So this is title frame. I should call it frame. This is a bit better. So I can add here another measure bounds to this title to measure this and store this then in the title frame. So I'm just going to show this down here. So in this case, you see, and we're taking out the spacer again. <laughs> okay, now I have this hello world text origin, so the top left corner. In the origin, in reference to the coordinate system of this whole view, so up here. Basically, here is the origin, so you need to go down there. If I now want to say I want to use it in ref the, co the coordinate system of my blue tier, I can add this namespace coordinate space name and say this is my space. So this needs to be the same name here. This is the same. And now I get the origin in reference to this point. You see it's now 120 and 180 and you can test this by changing the alignment to top leading. And then it's now on the top leading corner and you see it's okay. It's not perfectly zero. I don't know why this is. is. But you see, the hello world text is now the origin of my blue teal coordinate system. Measuring the sizes of views like this is, can be very convenient. Just need to be careful for the tricks. Now the next topic is layout priority. So I'm just going to create a new group. This is layout priority. So we start again with the UI kit implementation. This is a priority the view controller with a zip file <laughs> and a swift ui view priority swift ui view but this is the task of if i don't have enough space how am i going to distribute the space what is prioritized and whatnot and the easiest i guess is using text for this so i'm using here two labels so this is the beginning very long text. So I have here two text. Maybe I'm just going to make one, make their font size larger. 25. And then add some background colors to both of them. I have noticed two longer text that I want to have next to each other in the stack. So if I select both of them and then embed in stack view. They're now in a horizontal stack and I can add the other constraints. So this is just top leading and trailing. And I'm going to increase the trailing to 16 to make it on purpose, not fitting. And then the height to 30. Now it gives me here a red arrow telling me increase horizontal compression resistance of this is the beginning from 750 to 755 to keep the intrinsic size width before other views. This is because right now it is cutting off the first text, but I can also say I want to pri I prioritize the first text and I don't want it to be compressed, which helps me with this, which I can accomplish with changing the resistance change priority and now the first text is displayed fully and the second one is cut off or truncated 
So in this property, you can see if you select the, this is this beginning text and down here. So the horizontal compression resistance is 750, 751, which is higher than the long text, which means that the first text is not compressed or prioritized in the layout. After this longer explanation and setup, we can do the same in SwiftUI. So again, I use an H stack. This is the beginning, just setting up two texts, very long text and changing the background color. So this is just adding a color in the background color dot. So the first one is gray and the second one is blue and I need to change the font. So after the H stack, because I want to change both fonts, font, so this is a system font with size. I think I used 24. Well, let's make 30 just to overdo this. So per default, SwiftUI does wrap the text. In order to um, fix it, I use a line limit of one. And now you see, so the first text is truncated. How do we prioritize this layout? In UI kit, you set the how much it resists compressing. And in SwiftUI, we only have one property actually, and that's the layout priority. Layout priority with this value of one. So let's put a one. So the layout priority for text is zero. And in this case, it's the second text is zero and the first one is one. So the first text is prioritized. This kind of layout priority works very well with texts. It's not working very well with views that don't have a specific intrinsic size. For example, if I use here color.gray and I change this to 20, I can now increase the layout priority of the second text also to one. So these two texts are prioritized. But for example, if you would prioritize the gray, you see, you only see the gray because it, what the layout system basically is doing is from the available space, that it needs to distribute between its children. It's now prioritizes my color and offers it all of the available space. And the color is a very greedy view. It just takes everything. It doesn't have a maximum. So all the space goes to the gray and I don't see all my text. Maybe it doesn't really make too much sense with this. Okay, I'm just going back. But you see my two texts get now all the space and then the remaining goes to the color. So this order works very well. I already started discussing the intrinsic content size for UI kit. Per default, SwiftUI for most of these views uses the intrinsic content size. Like for the con for text, it just makes it its necessary size or its fixed size. For other views, it makes it as big as it needs to be. And then there's like views that are more, you can adjust or at least it makes more sense to adjust it. Maybe I'm going to just show you one of them. This is, this is the fixed size example view. So the example for this is a toggle because in this case you have a title toggle and a binding. So I'm just going to create here a state property. Now it is on bool and we start with false. So I can use this here. Okay, maybe we're just adding some padding. I'm not sure the contrast is not very high right now. So you see here the toggle. Okay, I make this on. Sounds always better. And we go in the selectable preview. If you now tap on this toggle, you see it's actually expanding. It is adding a spacer between the title and the um, interface, the tappable interface. This is the case if this view is more taking up more space. But what is the... Um, intrinsic content size, what if, how do I tell the system to use only the necessary spy, uh, space? And for this, we can use a fixed size. So you see it is taking, it's not using the spacing anymore. You have the possibility to um, distinguish here between vertical and horizontal. Okay, this is basically doing the same because it's not expanding anyway in the vertical direction. Let's just add another one. So for example, if you use a color dot gray and you add a fixed size to false, 
So I say use a fixed size in the horizontal direction so it makes it as narrow as it needs to be. And the intrinsic size of a color is like, it's not, the system is not clear what that's supposed to be. So it makes it very small, as you can see. And vertically, I said, uh, don't make this restricting. Use this, don't override the um, default behavior. Maybe it's better to do the opposite. Now it's only expanding in the horizontal direction. So we can, you can use this fixed size to um, compress some of these views. There's, the reason why it's actually working is because if you add uh, a spacer, this would now take up a lot of space. And if you add a fixed size to a spacer, it's basically um, reducing it to its intrinsic size, which is nothing. So it takes away the spacing properties. Other examples for um, where this might be useful is you go in the library, something like a progress or a picker or sliders and steppers. But it's a neat trick if you want to um, use the intrinsic size with this fixed size view modifier. As the last bigger topic is, so far you saw me using this alignment guides. Here, when I had these two views, I basically only used these alignment guides to pin the leading to the trailing edge. But what is it when you say I want to align something a little bit more complex? For example, I want to align the central the bottom edge of a view to the center of another view. Where is this, for example, used? This is one of the sample projects from Apple. This is this landmark app. And we are in the um, landmark detail view. What we have here is I have a map view on top where they used a frame of a height. So for example, here we could also use a strict with aspect ratio to have it nicely scaled up for larger screens. And here I'm overlaying or I'm half overlaying the circle image over this map view. So we're pushing it up. If I take these two modifiers out, you see, because we are in a scroll view, it's actually using like a V stack. They are below each other and I need to move one of these views, the circle image up. You can do this with the offset. So if I only take the offset in, it moves it over, but Offset doesn't change the layout or it doesn't change how much space a view takes in. So in order to get rid of the other space, they used a padding with a minus value. So this is a working solution that I also kind of use quite long, but I found a much better trick, a much better solution that works more in alignment with, in alignment with the Swift UI layout system. Because offset and padding is kind of using this here is kind of a hack especially because um, the way they did it, jump to the definition of my circle image, the images they are using, they're using, they're not using here resizable or anything, they're using the size of the original image. So the original image is 260 by 260, which means in order to move it up, they need to move it up 130. You might already see a looming bug coming up. If they decide at some point to change the images and someone doesn't add the images with the same size, maybe they add them a little bit bigger. For example, if they would add here 200, 300, then my offset wouldn't be enough. This image would be bigger and it would actually look not centered anymore. And the whole thing basically doesn't work because I have here this hard coded values for my layout. <laughs> it's actually a shame they didn't put in a better solution. Okay, let's go back and do this. So if you're, okay, maybe I just for uh, advanced alignment. Okay, I'm just going to create this for Swift UI because in UI kit is a little bit more work. So this is advanced Swift UI view. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the two images that I have in my assets and I need to make them both resizable and scale to fit. Resizable, scale to fit, mask, circle. And then I need to add for this a frame width because mine are bigger. We can also take advantage of some of the stuff we just did. For example, I can use the bounce to make this 
much more to get rid of all my um, hard-coded values this is var bond cg rect dot zero and i can use this from the for my measure bonds so we can change the height to bonds dot width multiplied by 0 0.7 uh, now I have actually a problem because I do start with zero. So I need to actually change this. Scale to fill. Mm -hmm. And I can also use this for my image by saying maybe I want to have the bounce width multiplied by 0 0.4. Okay, maybe I should have used six or something because it was very big in the original. Okay, what I want to do now is overlay these two partially. And the first thing I'm going to do is use a Z stack. So now my circle is on top. I can use the alignment of my Z stack to say I use the bottom alignment. Now the alignment guide that I'm using for my candy image is the correct one. It's aligning it to the bottom, but I want to, instead of using the bottom alignment guide of my circle, I want to use its center. And you can override this with the alignment guide modifier. And here you need to say what you want to use, override. I basically need to override the one I specified in my C stack. So this has to be bottom. Then you get a closure where you can actually decide how to compute this. So this is the view dimensions. And in this case, I want to use the view dimensions alignment. This is the vertical alignment guides center. And you see, we already have, we have the result that I wanted. Maybe I'm just going to make this with the other stuff. Okay, I just added here this overlay and shadow. So you see, I'm directly now saying the system as it expects. The default alignment guide I'm using is bottom. So the image, I don't override this for the candies. So I use this bottom alignment guide. And for the dessert, I'm using its alignment guide of center. This is bit, pretty much what you would expect from auto layout. You're just using this view's bottom alignment guide to this one's center alignment guide. You can also change this by adding here a constant, just adding here 30. You usually don't remember which direction this is going. So now it offsets it by 30 to the top. We're going down. Other possibilities that you get here is you might as well just use a hard-coded value that you can also do. So now it's using this alignment guide on the bottom 50. Um, or you can use the view dimensions. You also get the height. For example, you might want to say 0.7% of the height. So then this is 70% of the height that is aligned to the candy images bottom edge trading alignment guide. <laughs> you can also use multiple of them if you want. For example, now I use the bottom one alignment guide of center. Actually, I need to change this because I need to overwrite it. So this is bottom leading. So now I can override the leading, which means it's the horizontal alignment. View dimensions. So here you can say 20. So now it moves to 20% in this direction. This is probably not the best example because of this image. But you can fine tune it in whatever direction you want. I'm just going to take this one out and go back to just bottom alignment of the one that I wanted with this center. And the nice thing that you see here, the reason why I actually left this text is the text is always just moved below. So it never overlays the other stuff. It's just really close because my padding is like too small or my spacing is too small. As you see, with the solution of alignment guides, I don't need to use any hard-coded values anymore, anymore, and it scales nicely. As an extreme contrast, we, I can also use here a bigger one like the iPad. And now you see, it is actually because I <laughs> used all of the scaling, the this bounce, it scales it nicely, it keeps the aspect ratio, and the circle is also scaled up, but I keep the same alignment to each other. So it's very useful to know about this alignment guides. Which is why I like to show you this. Um, just I don't think they get used enough. 
for what you actually are able to do with them. This is the first step. If you have alignment guides or views that are on the same stack, if you want to align things over multiple stacks, you need to write your own alignment guides. You, for example, you have a movie detail view where you want to show a um, hero image on the back, then the small main image next to it, the title and some more information. So we have, I need to go in the selectable preview. I have the top part here in the Z stack. For in the background, I have the sky image and then I have an H stack for this image and another V stack with the title and this information. Now, in this case, I use this alignment guides to um, add this here to my title mountain between us. So this is this alignment guide with my special custom alignment guide where I'm using here this bottom plus a, sp a certain spacing. So I'm basically using this edge from this um, from this title and it and this is aligned to my hero image. So this to this sky image. So they always should be aligned to each other on this edge. For example, if I change the title to have a one line title, you see the title didn't actually or the edge didn't move. So it stayed at the same position. What changed is this image. This is because I, <laughs> you can then make this a lot more complicated and add alignments of how is this image aligned to this text. So in this case, I used a top alignment and I did add here. So they are not actually, as you see, this image is not aligned to the top of my headline. This is because I added another alignment guide here. So if I take this out, now you see they're actually they're actually aligned on top of each other, but maybe you want to, you could have also used the bottom of these. So it's basically the sky image is aligned to my mountains button text, which is then using the alignment, which is then aligning this image to it or the stack to it, because I wanted to push this a little bit up. I used another alignment guide to say instead of using the top edge, I use the height plus twenty five percent. So here there's an offset of 25% of this image height. In order to make this work over multiple stacks, because you see I have here an H stack with a V stack that is aligned to some one more higher level. Why do I need to write my own alignment guide? This is because it needs to know which alignments to match to, to each other. Because if you just use the default ones, it doesn't know. You always need to specify, oh, I have my special movie alignment. And now I want to override this for this view. So I need to use this alignment. Just shortly, you can how to write your alignment guides. So this is a little bit more difficult uh, because it's a Z stack. So I'm just going to go to the first implementation. So in this case, um, this is the simpler version of you have two views that you want to align to each other. So in this case, because these images are different and the texts are different, you want to align it to the bottom of each of these images. So first you need to create a struct that is conforming to alignment ID with default values. So in this case, my default is just using the vertical alignment bottom. And then you need to create a static property in the extension of vertical alignment. This allows you to use it here with an H stack alignment. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to attach it here. So this is pretty much it. Then you can, as I said, use it in your stacks because it's an H stack. It needs to be a vertical alignment and you can override Use, and then you again use the alignment guides and the sub stacks. So this is inside the V stacks to say, okay, I override now this image title alignment guide and using here this views bottom, not the whole V stacks bottom, but this views bottom. And then do that in the same for the same in the other stack. You can write your own alignment guides for each horizontal direction and vertical direction. And then for in order to use this with a Z stack, you need to attach this, add another static property to alignment because this needs to know the horizontal and vertical one. In this case, I for horizontal, I didn't really care. So then I used the leading and then for the vertical one, I used just the one that I already had. So usually you don't need to write your, a lot of alignment guides, just like two is prob two or three is probably enough to um, make you do all kinds of things.
you might only want to add more for more default values. As you see, this alignment guides are super useful in creating this complex layouts that are super adjustable and you can tweak it very specifically. It's only a little bit of tricky in the end to find out what you pin to what, <laughs> but definitely check them out. I'm going to leave more information in the description box. So there is one talk from WWDC when they introduced SwiftUI. Then there is a blog post from SwiftUI Lab, which is really good. Or you can also follow my SwiftUI course where I go through all of this in length. <laughs> but definitely check it out. It's pretty good. <laughs> Last, I wanted to just shortly mention some stuff that I didn't, I wasn't able to work out. So I'm just going to open one of my zip files. I'm going to open the size view controller zip file. I'm go not going to change it. Just want to go through the properties that you can actually use. So when you tap here on one of those alignment guides on this layout constraints, I'm just starting to get confused with all these words. You see, we can create here first item, second item, and this is the one we did with the layout guides, for example. We can use this constants. This is, for example, if I had paddings or if the layout guides, I can add more values there. What I cannot do easily is, for example, here multiplying. Then you, you need to do some extra work with measuring things and calculating things and hope and praying it doesn't create a bug. We also have here this less than or equal to or greater than. This in specifically this you can do, for example, here for the width, you can say with these flexible frames, I want to have a minimum, maximum, or just scale it up to this and this value, like the greater than. You can do this with flexible frames. Where I don't see it working is when you have here this padding, this constants, where I'm pinning it to my uh, super views leading edge with this constant. With auto layered, you can say less than or equal to less than or equal or greater than or equal. Okay, now it's complaining because it doesn't like it in this case. This kind of for the padding, you don't for the padding, we don't have a variation. You probably have to um, yeah calculate something yourself, like what I did with this measuring sizes here. Um, you can use the frame sizes that we had to calculate some paddings. But this is even more tricky because as I, as you saw, I have some kind of feedback of I measure something, I change its frame because I add fra padding, which causes me to calculate the padding again. So I'm not really sure if this is a good idea. So you have to pay attention to in which order you attach these view modifiers here of modifying and measuring. Yeah, but this kind of bigger than or smaller than is not I don't really see an easy way of doing this and I don't really want to hack something. In contrast to UIKit and SwiftUI, you always have to deal with the layout that, that automatically happens. And I really encourage you to uh, try out some of the things I showed you and think a little bit more out of the normal things they propose. Also, don't always use the um, solutions from the Apple tutorials as the best solution because they only make these frameworks they probably don't really see what kind of requirements you have, where we would want to use this, how we would want to extend this. So it's better to um, think a little bit further than what they show you. This is the end of a very long comparison. I hope I could shorten the gap between UI Kit and SwiftUI layout for you, so you can build better apps with this that are more adjustable and look great. Please give this video a like. It helps out the video and shares it with more people. Until next time, bye.